Hello around Victoria and welcome to the second weekend of VFA action. This week uh, end bringing together the two semi-finals today. The first semi-final from Port Melbourne between Box Hill and Springvale. Springvale have won seven of their last eight. They're on a bit of a roll and many think they may go all the way this year. Box Hill have lost three in a row, the last two weeks in a row against Dandenong and now face the possibility of going out in straight games. Also this afternoon we'll be crossing out to Sandown at half time for uh, some progress reports on practice for tomorrow's Sandown 500 which will be shown exclusively on ABC television. We'll keep you up to date of course with the first of the elimination finals in the AFL being played at Waverley this afternoon and at half time the fourth final in the VFA sprint should be a beauty. Stand by for that one at half time as well of course our competition for the marks and goals of the year. Have your pens and pencils ready at half time in this big match. Today though down at the port in the reserves it was Second semi-final day between Coburg and Paran. And Coburg, big winners, 24-16, 160 to Paran, 11-10, 76. Paran, though, has the chance to play again next week in the preliminary final against the winner between Dandenong and Williamstown. The first semi in the reserves being played tomorrow. But we'll go down to the port now. The boys are standing by. I did give my apologies to uh, George Wallace on your behalf uh, last night, Peter G. Of course, a fellow Manchester United supporter, but I understand you had... Uh, fairly uh, heavy commitment yourself. Yes, uh, well George, uh, VSF, uh, the Soccer Federation, he's been a stalwart there. I was out at the Coburg Football Club, it was a testimonial for Brad Nimmo and Phil Cleary, stalwarts in the association. Good afternoon everybody, welcome to Port Melbourne, really has got a springtime finals feeling down here today and without any further ado let's look at the Springvale lineup for this game. Uh, they've lost Rod Morgan, that's a bit of a blow, a hamstring injury will keep him out. Experienced Pat Foy comes onto the bench, McDonough goes onto the half forward flank, so uh, changes to every line from the team you would have seen in the paper. Springvale has only played Box Hill once this season, losing by 27 points back in round seven, but selector Bill King says a lot of things have changed since then. Yeah, fairly convincingly, they, um, that day they had a lot of good runners uh, that were playing well. Um, our team, team's changed around a fair bit since then, so, you know, it's, uh, it's another day. Is that running part of their game what you fear most from them? Well, yeah, our strength is in our big man department, um, so, yeah, we've just got to watch that on their running side of their game, and uh, if we can curb that, then we should come out on top. The Box Hill players will line up as they appeared in the press. That's pretty unusual. Interchange to miss out Handley, Box and Penny, whose hamstring hasn't allowed him to taste finals football as yet. Brett Stokes is playing his first senior game today from off the bench. Well, last week, Shane Malloy's Box Hill had too many players down, something they can't afford when it's do or die like today. This week, hopefully, the fact that it is desperation uh, football, that we're going to uh, see players uh, play four quarters, and uh, it brings the best out in them. Well, looking at Springvale, they conceded the least points of any team. They've got a very good defence. Have you got anybody up there that's going to kick a winning score for you with, well, Butterford, who was top scorer against them earlier in the year, back at full back? Yeah, I'm conscious of that. I noticed uh, this one thing I did look at right throughout the year, and that was I always look at which is the best defence and where we are in terms of our forwards and our defence. Um, our forward line was about third best for the year. So I think we've shown, even though without a full forward, we've had people that can kick goals. So I'm just hoping that we've got enough talented players, six, seven players in that area who can kick the goals. Well, maybe that's the important point. Sam Kekovic, Phil Cleary, great to have you with us again, gents. Uh, the forward line, perhaps, that gets on top today could go a long way to winning. And as uh, Shane said, they've both got good defences. Well, they have. Uh, Springvale, I think, has the tools to really worry Box. I think we found last week Box Hill in defence struggled a little bit against the likes of Welsh. Butterfin did well, but they, had to, they lose Butterfin from the midfield to have to cover the fullback. I think uh, Springvale, for some reason, has history on its side. They seem to be on a roll. Yet, there's no doubt Box Hill's good enough to win the game if they can get that running game and that link up game going. And they are quicker than Springvale, so it's going to be an interesting contest. I agree, Phil. I'm all for Springvale. I can't see Simon Clark being beaten. I think he'll dominate the big man contest. And I think Keith Robinson, the full forward, will be the key forward in the contest. He'll kick a bag of goals. And I don't expect Springvale to be nowhere near as benevolent as they were last week by allowing Port Melbourne to jump them. I think they'll be too ruthless, too methodical, and they'll have numbers to the ball. OK, well, the team that kicks with a win in the first quarter could have some advantage. It's pretty blowy down here. Ross Booth down on boundary line. It sure is blowy, Peter. And Box Hill will kick with the win. Perhaps another six-goal quarter coming up. David Butterfield and Keith Robinson already into it in the goal square. Uh, but uh, very uh, warm conditions too, about 23 degrees. So uh, it'll be tiring today. Yes, good point, Ross. Certainly the conditions will sap the energy of the players. It's the first time we've really encountered 
all year. Conditions of this ilk. Something in the low 20s. A northerly. Firm footing for the players. Ideal conditions. Slightly marred by the breeze. But it really is tailor-made for a crackerjack contest. Do or die final, Pete. Well, Box Hill got away to a great start last week. Dandy Nong, I think, showed what a good side they were to come back from six goals down. I'm sure Box Hill, if they get a start like that again, won't let it slip this week. So it's Lyle who wins the first tap, but his opponent, Clark, gets the ball sort of out in the middle. Doug Coop finishes off the job. So it's the Vales up towards half forward. Conditions at ground level, absolutely perfect. Here's Elliott for Spring Vale, forced over the line by O'Neill. Nickel harried by Hogan. There's O'Neill. Oh, his handball going astray, and how's the umpire seen that one? It's back behind the play. Dalrymple and Malin tangled. It's O'Neill who's taken the free kick, and what an accomplished player he is. Terrific defender. Dennis Rich, Jeff Morrow in charge of this game. There's Clark against Lyle. Ball knocked down towards DeBoer. Hamilton tried hard to get it forward. Phil Malin left the screen, waits for the tap. Lyle and Clark go for it. Down. Quick kick forward by Coop for the Vales. Into the breeze they go. Elliot coming through with Scurra. Elliot's got it though. High ball, Dempster in front. And from the oh. back, there's Robinson. Judge it very well. He really is a magical player, isn't he? You could, he had his name written all over that ball. Dempster vying for position with his opponent. But coming in from the side. Butterfin caught out of position too, Sam, on the other side of the pack. Yes, good point, Phil. I'm telling you there. No mistake from the full forward. First goal of the match. The Vales into the breeze. Off to O'Neill. De Boer comes with a run and takes a good grab. Quickly off to Dalrymple. He has a look. Spears a pass in, looking for Byrne, and it beats him. And out comes Honest Martin Mendy. Scrubby old kick. Diving is Peter Maloney, pressured by Hicks. And finally, Reese clears Elliott over the top to Coop. He'll run inside 50 over the top to Nickel. No shoots at goal. The win bringing it back very nicely. Second goal on the board to Springdale. Well, gee, I don't know. Box Hill, they just can't put it together today. They're not delivering the ball well. Scott Hicks in the middle, not chasing. We'll see this piece of play. Actually comes out to Cooper just prior to that. Scott Hicks was in the play and didn't chase. And the result, a goal. Great goal by Coop into the breeze. Box Hill have got some problems. Last week they started well and delivered the ball with pinpoint accuracy. And that is not happening today. There's Hicks. Hit down. Malin. Oh, gives it away. Said. Goes for the goal line. De Boer. He made the ground. Oh, he's got a big chance here. Goal. Matt DeBoer getting away from Smith, who was anchored to the spot. And uh, that's a quick reply to the goal from Coop. First for Box Hill comes up after nine and a half minutes. He's doing very well, the big man. We saw him take a fine mark at centre-half forward against Reese, And here we saw him admittedly against Smith, who's not the quickest man on two feet. But he still recovered very well and snapped truly. Full Mountain battles on. In front of the grandstand. Losing ground, Maloney. Laid on the seat, Robinson! What hands! <laughs> He's just magical to watch, isn't he? Robinson now looks in short. Oh, Nickel did well to spoil after the, the pass was intended for him. Elliott off to Clark. With the wind again holding it up very much. Hogan still in play. Scarra flips it out. Shot is good from Robinson. Geez, kicked his second off. An incredible angle. The ball was going it's zig you know, zigzagging across the floor line and how they go that over. Off his left foot too. Yes. We might catch this on the replay. It was a, a lovely handle by Scarra. Low and hard. Look at That's Robbo there on the left boot. And I'll tell you what, he's pretty happy about that goal. Look at the hand. The left arm goes up in the air and so it should. Looking for Clark against Lyle. Good mark, Mark Lyle. That's a part of his game that sometimes lets him down. But uh, he's matching it well with Clark in the early going. Yes. Good to see big Mark Lyle involved. Now, De Boer in the middle of this. It almost falls for Brown. He volleys it through. Good work. Over the back of the pack. Well, I think he was as surprised as anyone, Peter, that that ball ended up only a 
half a metre from his foot and he was able to ping it through the goal. So big, Matt DeBoer does all the big work. And then, well, Brownie, he could have marked the ball. But he maybe lost sight of it. But anyway, an important goal. And Box will really have to just start running with a bit of confidence, getting their game together. And that's the policy they'd be far better off adopting too, Phil, getting the ball long to DeBoer immediately. That's about a teammate, Maloney. Over the head of Clark, but he's got support. Here's Coop. Dudley. Gee, they've moved it well out of defence here. Will swing too far to score. Dempster still in play. Nickel off to Scarra. This has got to be a goal. It is. What tremendous football. Springvale copybook into the wind without a Box Hill player touching it from full back. And there again we see that work, spring bar work ethic in evidence, Phil. Just numbers to the ball. But this, Waves of runners. But this key forward area is uh, so critical. I think Box are under a lot of pressure when the ball's in the air and it goes near Robinson or Dempster and then you get Scurra to slide in and uh, pluck a goal. I can't see, I just don't know how Box are going to get around this problem. Instead, Hamilton chips in. Long, Lyle's now resting at full forward or in the pocket. Don't if he's got the ground skills, feeds it off to Byrne, who's been quiet. Off to Hamilton, they don't quite know what to do. On the left, goal coming up. Yes, good effort, Ashley Hamilton. A quick reply once more. Well, they certainly need a few of those. Look, I mean, Box Hill's a good side. They're just not putting together, putting it together at the moment. Good handball there from uh, Byrne after Lyle and Hamilton on the left foot and that's a good goal to swing the ball around in the very tricky conditions today with the wind blowing and a sort of uh, diagonal across the ground Ross isn't it I like this player Matt DeBoer is way up on centre wing this man Paul Smith doesn't know what to do he's hanging around on half back so they're outnumbered in their forward line box hill at the moment not that it counts for much because it's quarter time here and nine scoring shots to four against the breeze. Springvale have begun the better here. Keith Robinson has two goals, singles to uh, Paul Scarra and Doug Coop. While for Box Hill, number of their goals fortuitous, but they'll take them any way they can get them in the early going. Brown, DeBoer, Hamilton, the goal kickers for Box Hill. It's quarter time here at Port Melbourne. VFA first semi final Saturday, and it's a 10 point lead for Springvale over Box Hill. They kick a goal though, and uh, they're only four points behind. No score yet in the second quarter. Here's Dalrymple, chipping it for Diulio. Pulls it in one-handed, he goes one-handed so often. He does, that's a good grab though. Good kick too. Excellent kick into the face of the breeze. Now Ronnie, this is a big kick for you, mate. Is he allowed enough? The boys yes. Well. Four points the difference. First for Rondi Olio. Dudley McDonough. Long into the pocket. And in just two kicks, the spring goal right into the teeth of goal. Cleared by Butterfield. Oh, the lucky kick. On the rebound are the Mustangs through Hogan. Calling for it, Dalrymple. Already those on ball players for Box Hill doing much better in the second quarter. Here's Hicks. Calling for it long is Byrne. Reese got a hand to it. DeBoer off the ground. Second for DeBoer and Boxhill are in front. Well, it's all come in the midfield, and we've mentioned this before that if the, if Box, the Boxhill runners get into the game, Scott Hicks, who looked a bit lethargic early, and now running and Dalrymple and setting by Butterfield, really good out of defence, creating the play, and they're looking good. That's the way they've got to play the game. DeBoer coming from behind on Clark. Takes the mark, so to speak. Here's Stokes. Byrne will double back. It's gone oh! through. Stokes with about his third kick in VFA football has kicked his first goal. Well, so often that ball, you watch that ball and you're sure it's going to bounce the other way. We'll see it on screen. That's, that has been kicked from about 70 metres. <laughs> well... <laughs> 
In the wind, just about 70. Yes. 70. Well, if that fence hadn't been there, it would have travelled 75 metres. Brett Stokes too. from Lavington, who played in the Ovens and Murray Grand Final last year, beaten by Wang Rovers, and Paul Scurra from Springvale played in that Wang Rovers side. Hogan, Great good work by Butterfant. Dal Rempel getting his legs going. Bit too tall for uh, Diulio. Hick couldn't take it with him. Brosnahan looking better and better. Lila quick hand. About it. Miss Hicks, that was a bad one. Capels fends off Hicks. Thumps long. Robinson stands, keeps his ground. Now the hand pass and Coop will goal. Second goal to go, Doug Coop. And first back two, two points. Now who will get there first? Diulio or Heaney? Was a bump. Yeah, but he got him on the head. Oh, he shouldn't have put his head there. <laughs> 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 yeah, you just can't enough. do that. I'll take it back. Oh, here's Robinson. Easy as you like for his third. That's in Williamstown Road. And Springvale back in front by three points. So have to put on two extra staff for you. Oh, what do you call in the uh, corporation's optometrist, I think. <laughs> No, I just think it was very close. Oh, I think your vision's being impaired by your uh, extracurricular activities, yeah. Philip. <laughs> Could have been, yes. Yes, the big testimonial night last night. Philip manning the microphone for 100% of the time. <laughs> yes, by the way, congratulations, mate. Well deserved. And Brad Nimmo. Yeah. Been a fine ornament to the game. It's a good night. But it's Maloney for Springvale getting another one. They've steadied and are now going a little bit away. Nine points up. Right there, Doug. See, Play playing out. to instructions. And moving the ball now over to the attacking side. Well, he's oh. gone too far. Oh, no, this is criminal. Not so much of the decision, but the penalty that's going to be exacted on Box Hill by Springvale should they kick another one from a howler. Gee. That is hard lines. Troy Heaney did very well bursting out of the fence. If only he had taken a bounce a step prior. How far do you reckon he ran? Oh, I don't know. I think he ran his full complement, Philip. Dempster. First goal for Graham Dempster. A man of his experience doesn't look that sort of gift horse in the mouth. Who's running onto this one? It's said. Oh, his hands failed him and he lost the grip on it. Oh, this Smith puts his body down. Plenty of defence got across there in time. He's struggling, Brian said, too. You know, got Del Rimple off and said still on the ground. You know, I think you could go the other way, really. Hands on hips and a bit of a disconsolate look on the face of Mark Lyle there. Box Hill got themselves right back into it from 10 points down. At quarter time, they led by three points at one stage, kicking the first three goals of the quarter. But then Springvale, in 15 minutes, answered with four goals to take back the lead. They're 17 points up with their goals coming from Robinson, three, two to Coop, singles Dempster, Maloney and Scurra. For Box Hill, two to DeBoer, singles to Stokes, Diulio, Hamilton and Brown. Half-time VFA first semi-final at Port Melbourne and it's Springvale leading Box Hill by 17 points. Scott Hicks a big shake up after that bit of play because he did not move and let his player run into the play. Brosnahan around the body, shepherded it through for a goal. Well after uh, inactivity for the first nine minutes of the quarter, Box Hill get the major and they're ten points down. Good time to steady, centering kick, no one there at all. Late though, and the spoil was Byrne who ran hard. Baylor left it behind, Mendy, oh he might be penalised, yes he is. It's a good decision and a brave one by Jeff Morrow, the umpire. Martin uh, had prior opportunity to get rid of the ball. It was well tackled. And Byrne has shown he, he can contest. Shepherding through the earlier goal. Now the fine tackle. And an accurate kick. Only his third possession. 
But uh, still persisting is Ashley Bird. I don't know whether it wasn't Hicks that actually put the, the right tackle on. No, no, no it was Ashley Bird. Gee, that's, a way, that's a way to tie a player up. There's no right. way he can get rid of the ball. In fact, should that be a free kick, he's got to be able to get rid of the yeah, ball, doesn't right. he? It's a perfect that's tackle. It was a perfectly timed replay. <laughs> we might get to the stage where players run around... Um, holding each other's hands to stop them getting the ball away. Oh, that's a bit ominous. Maloney yes. leaping off. Yes, he just indiscriminately blasted. There's no excuse for a player of that ability to do that. Smith gets good distance into the wind. Coop tackling Zarafa. Chance for Stokes. Shows a bit of toe, the youngster. Lines up, kicks a goal and puts him in front. Good play. Second goal to Brett Stokes. Now, can they uh, extend the lead with another goal? They got three points up in the second quarter, only to squander it. Box Hill have the chance now to exert some influence on the game. Del Rimple. And he's found Hicks. Oh, yes. Zarafa can handball on. It's a goal. Byrne gets his second. And the Mustangs have got some kick in them at last. Well, we've seen them in, uh, in previous games, haven't we, Peter, where they, they just get a bit of spirit up and a bit of enthusiasm and they really start to fly. That's a great handball. I was a bit worried at first, but it came off a left-hander. Another left-hander from Laurie Zarafa to Byrne made sure of the goal. Very good play. Well, these torpedo punts. Doesn't quite get onto it. Foy can't be spoiled by Stokes. Very strong mark from the experienced Pat Foy. He slotted it in towards Nickel. That's a strong mark. Well, I really need this man to lift. Well, again, the problem coming from the kick-in because O'Neill had to then try and get down to spoil his man, Nickel, and didn't get there in time and has hurt himself in the process. He's not a good torpedo punt kicker anyway, but he should be trying to get possession. Oh, the kick from Nickel. Terrific goal. And what an important one. That stemmed the flow a little bit. They're back within four points. Don't look all that uh, effective. They are covering plenty of territory. Sky darkens here at Northport. But Dalrymple gets the Mustangs forward. Loose ball. Oh, great effort by Smith. Desperate it was. Set on the left foot. He's put it through, has he? Yes! Another freakish goal from the Mustang. This time, Brian said. Now, well, what a timely grab by the big man. Lyle has taken more marks than uh, I think we've seen from him all season today. 16 possessions as he gets the ball out wide to Danny Burke. Furthest down the ground, we've seen him. De Boer, knock on. Looking for Butterford, who's come right down. In front of the goals is Hicks. Oh. Almost, but it's fallen for Byrne. Third for the quarter for Ashley Byrne, and they've all been from in the goal square. And Matt. Hicks contesting, Phil. Great stuff, but Matt De Boer, the punch, he's done that consistently. And look at that David Butterford from full back, the runner. Fit as a fiddle, David Butterford. Great play, Hicks. Really that took that the pack working on. working well that you were advocating, Philip. Burned the full forward. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sammy has been on the end of a couple yes. of games. Yes. They fly and spoil one another. Hooked around the body. Oh, oh bad bounce for Brown. Great work, I think it was Brosnahan, was it? Who got some sort of kick at the pool. Would have been a miracle goal. Springvale have survived that onslaught. But they've got a bit of work to do with the wind in the last quarter. Box Hill in that quarter added four goals to Springvale's three. And it makes the difference 14 points with a quarter to go in the cutthroat first semi. Springvale one goal, sorry, Sam. Yes, I don't know where I got that three from. But uh, the goal kickers for Box Hill burn three all in that quarter. Stokes has got two as has De Boer. They're the multiple goal kickers, while for Springvale, Robinson has three, Coop has two. So a quarter to go here at Port Melbourne. Box Hill against the breeze, but with their tails up, leading Springvale at three-quarter time. Brusner, uh, sorry, uh, De Boer at full forward. Here's Nickel. A real change has come around positionally out there from both teams. Cameron Stewart. High ball for Robinson. Easy meet for O'Neill's fist. Malin takes his time. Maloney, as usual, on the end of the handball. The breeze will bring it back. First blood for the Vales. Cool, calculating hit there. And who was it, Peter? The two players? That uh, M &M, the M&M <laughs> combination. 
Have a look at this hand pass. What superb vision what and that? superb execution. And look at the kick on the <laughs> left foot, Philip. Beautiful. Skill personified. I see O'Neill has gone on to Robinson. Butterfin to centre half back. Looks like Stewart's going to get it, or will it come back to Maloney? Brosnahan. Stewart's a prodigious left footer, too. Should be a big kick, big goal. Well, the breeze will help him. Dempster flies off the hands of Robinson. It's a goal. <laughs> Four for Keith Robinson. Philip. <laughs> well, he's just. I've run out of superlatives to describe this man. Just a great player. I'd have been interested to see how he did with guy in league football, really. But over the back, and look at this. Smart as you like. Great no recovery problems. because yeah. uh, he got a hand to it. And again, the bounce takes it away from him. Oh, Good tackle on Stokes. Well smothered there by Elliott, but there are two Mustangs here. One of them is Butterford, but it goes to Coop. Malin pops it high. Robinson, Robinson or Clark. But a good defensive play there from Butterford to knock it down to O'Neill. It's going from full back line to full back line. Oh. Stokes in desperation oh. just got rid of it. Gee. Coop. Stewart. He's going to stand his ground and have a ping. Oh, this, <laughs> this is one of the best games oh. of defensive football yeah. for ages. Just rebounded from the de respective defences. See yeah, a lot of players catching their breath now. Oh. Well, he should have learned something from that last shot at goal. He only needs to correct a tiny amount. He's closer to Cameron Stewart to put Springvale in front. Yes. The deadlock's broken. It's six points the difference in the Vale's favour. You're right, Peter. Really addressed that. Took his time. Perfect execution. Wonderful kick. There was a lot of pressure on young Stokes who handballed indiscriminately, picked up by Coop and the experienced toll there because he steadied, great vision, spotted Cameron unopposed, and this was a fine kick. And look at the way he just finished off that kick. He just get burned to centre half forward, Ross. He's the half forward flanker. Hicks running back into the square with Mendy. Hicks a good mark. What a very good mark. What a sensational mark, Ross. In fact, not a tall player. Didn't have a big gap there from which to climb the player, but just jumped from virtually a standing start. Six marks to Hicks. If you see the replay, just realise how good a mark this really was. Difficult angle, but kicks a goal. He's first and puts the Mustangs back on level terms. Now, it's a big effort by Boxer, Ross. Now you talk about getting burned back. We'll see Julio's kick now. Look at where he's, it's a, almost a standing start, Mark. That is a tremendous mark. The Bucks are limited with what they can do in attack. They need burn at centre half forward, probably, but then again, on the ball, he's looked all right, too. So. Yes, Ross, you've improved out of sight. Well, there was one name he didn't have on our prospective list for man of the match. We're thinking about that, but there's still oh. a game to be won. Gross, just across the face, and they're in front. Breaks the deadlock. Empire Selwood in Fannick. He's the man on the spot. All the officials, no doubt, will be feeling a few nerves as well. Any mistakes by them, and it could be crucial to... Oh, oh no! Blue. Diulio, the goal! Unbelievable! And a smile from the umpire. And that's critical. Seven points. Ooh. Oh. oh, Paul Smith, gee whiz. Well, I was about to say, Phil, what a great game. It's had everything. Oh. And then you wouldn't see this mistake made in schoolboy football. But the pressure has got to them. Julio had two effective kicks for the day, two goals. 24 minutes gone. Smith, that's a thumping kick. No short pass this time. De Boer with a fist. That's all Box Hill. Dalrymple gathers. Spears it in towards Hicks, who's in front. And Julio, second coming up. Down he goes. And another rush behind. No, Hicks. Oh. What's he losing? Let go. How about that? It's Scott oh, Hicks. Unbelievable. Well, did that umpire signal a point? I think I'd love to see that again. Oh, dear. And great 
played by Julia. Look at the Does tape. the whole of the ball cover the line? That's the question. We can't see. Oh. Well, the other angle oh. might show us. Here it is. Watch it closely. It's going to go all over the line. Oh! We just, I think, oh, my God. The goal umpires. There'll be the outside some controversy. The well, oh, I think too difficult for us to say. But... <laughs> I think there's going to be an argument for four goal umpires well, now. It's 14 points the difference. <laughs> well, the poor goal, he couldn't have been much closer, Sam. If it had been four umpires, we would have had that. Is that your man that likes body towers, Peter? Yes, that was that goal umpire, Selwood. Very experienced VFL and AFL goal umpire. And faith and loyal in his charges. Play on! Play on! To ball court. That's play on! Elliot's kick. Play on, play on the call. Well, can the captain get one? He can! Malin's kicked the goal. Eight points the difference. Oh, still tied. Plenty of goals scored. Well, the coach slots a goal that gives them some hope. It's not a bad bit of play from the veteran, too. Is it onto the left foot? Steady. This is an important possession. This engine room possession now. De Boer. Burke was cool. O'Neill. Oh, what a game. What a game. Hogan. He has shut Elliott right out of it since uh, quarter time. And they've won it! Springvale's run comes to an end. The relief on the face of the Mustang coach. His players did him proud. They got the lead back in the third quarter, held it, and then held it in the last quarter. And they are through to the preliminary final. And Springvale, the wild card, has gone out of the final series. They've lost only their second game in eight. Hicks, an inspirational mark and goal. And then it was Springvale who had to try and find something in adversity, and they couldn't. And Box Hill have shown they have got finals character. Ross Booth is with the victorious coach. Victory for the Mustangs by eight points. Well, uh, Shane Malloy's just uh, shaking his head. Uh, hard to believe. Oh, it is, but the main thing is we've won a game, and they should get a lot of confidence from that, and a lot of character in that, uh, that win, Ross, I reckon. That was, that was great effort. They stuck to their guns, and, uh, like, when they drew level in that, that last quarter, they maybe could have been forgiven to just drop a little bit, but they didn't. They fought back hard, and uh, I think we had the legs, so they should have confidence in that, and... Uh, they got in there and showed a lot of character. I was really proud of them. Great you effort. made some very courageous moves too with Byrne onto the ball or in the back line and so forth. Yeah, obviously, Ash uh, just uh, wasn't himself down on the forward line. Things were a bit crowded, so we had to do something. But we hadn't got enough out of him. He's a great player, so the idea was to get him into the play, and that was the best way to do it, I think. Yes, and a uh, uh, word of congratulations on your composure. I think we're more rattled than you are. Uh, thanks very much, Ross. Okay, thanks terrific. a lot. Thank Shane Malloy, the victorious uh, winning coach for Box Hill. A man of the match in short time. OK, Ross, you're keeping us on hooks there about the man of the match, but, gee, Springvale again, like the grand final last year, the game was there for them just to really go for the jugular. They didn't do it, and Box Hill have taken their opportunity. Well, I think they did, but I reckon that uh, Shane Malloy took the front running in the last quarter. He juggled a couple of players around, and in the end, I think those tactics were critical to the outcome of the game. Burn onto the ball. God, what a bold move that was. It worked. Uh, Hicks went to the forward line in the third quarter, and then the last quarter plucked a big mark. So I reckon, you know, full full marks to uh, Shane Malloy. I reckon that was a great piece of work by the coach. Well, he isn't the man of the match, though. That man is with Ross Booth right now. Well, uh, that's the end of the, uh, you know, the nerves. It's Jared O'Neill, the centre-half back, and uh, well done. Bill, Bill Stuff from Wards Express has attack it. Well, that's a popular choice, Jared. On behalf of Wards Express, I congratulate you. Well done. Uh, well done to Box Hill. Uh, best luck for the rest of the season too, mate. It's a fantastic game today. Congratulations. The keys to the master. You are old enough to drive, aren't you? I am old enough. How old are you? Uh, 20. 20, OK. Oh, Thanks 20. to our wards and Mazda for the prize. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You just keep getting better and better, Jared. Uh, and two fine opponents today. You had uh, Stewie Nickel for most of the day. He had to go into the ruck and then Keith Robinson at the end. Uh, how nervous was it at the end? Actually, it was pretty hairy at the end, actually. The ball was coming down pretty quickly, and uh, they're both really good players. So uh, we're, you know, we're lucky to come out with it. It was a close game. It sure was. And, uh, next week, of course, now another difficult task against uh, Danny or Werribee. You, but I guess it's good to have a win under your belt now. Oh, yeah, we've lost three in a row, so we're getting a little bit worried there for, for a while. But um, I think we're a good enough team. It's just a matter we've got to get it together on the day. Okay. Jared O'Neill, our man of the match. Well done to
to Jared and to all of the Box Hill side. Uh, the first time these two teams have met in a final and they provided a great game for us. Commiseration Springvale. It was a withering run for them. They won uh, some, what was, seven out of nine. And it came to an end today at the hands of Box Hill by eight points. Quickly tomorrow, where will be Dandenong? I'm going for Dandenong. I think they can upset the nominal premiership favourites. Yes, the minor premiers Werribee's. Yes, I'll go for Werribee to win. I reckon that all those people, if you don't get down and watch VFA football at the moment, you're mad because you're missing some great stuff. Yeah, we've seen three great finals matches. Second semi-final tomorrow, but the first semi-final victors, Box Hill, well done to the Stangers as we hand back to the studio and John Bell. Thank you very much, Peter G. Haven't we had three terrific finals so far? And we'll all look forward to tomorrow's match. Let's just uh, confirm what tomorrow's match is. The second semi-final, where will be playing Dandenong? And, of course, the winner of that straight through to the grand final. The loser will come up against a very determined Box Hill, as they showed us this afternoon. Also, a reminder about tomorrow, our coverage from Sandown. We'll be uh, crossing out to Sandown for progress in the Sandown 500 at uh, half-time and also, hopefully, picking up... Uh, the closing stages of the race uh, just before five o'clock. Also an hour of highlights from Sandown tomorrow night on ABC television. Coming up shortly on the ABC we have sports news and uh, the WNBL uh, finals continue. Hobart playing Perth, coverage of that at five o'clock tonight. But uh, that's all in today's uh, coverage. Just a reminder of the score from the AFL today, the elimination semi-final. Terrific second half by the Demons. Alan Jakovic, the star, 38 points they won by. That's it for the VFA coverage today. See you next. See you next.